Okay, so I'm here to put a utility slant on um, everything we've quite heard so far. It's not quite as easy, I suggest, as uh, my uh, predecessors have said, and we'll touch on that in a little while. Um, why am I also here? I was the utility side uh, chairman to the Hawk UK um, reinstatement code of practice review committee for over 20 years. So brought in both second, third, and the latest fourth edition, at least from the utilities perspective. So hopefully we'll give a bit of a, um, a flavor of uh, what we're up against. Uh, but more importantly, we'll end off on, I think, a high note of opportunity, uh, both in terms of Mayon as a provider, and indeed for other um, coal and, and suppliers of materials uh, in this sort of sector. Okay, it's on the slide. Um, just a bit of an overview of, of where we are, what we're doing. Uh, we've been around for quite some time uh, in terms of coal alternative materials, um, over 20 years. Uh, in fact, from the very first version, June 1992 was the first yellow book, uh, Reinstatement Coal of Practice. Uh, so we very much have always embraced materials and as we get through each iteration, of the specification, we want to open that up absolutely to the maximum flexibility for us to do works uh, in, in the highway environment. Um, and we've got uh, new materials coming out, we'll see some today. Other providers are doing likewise. Uh, I'm not going to specific to Neon today, I'm going to try and give you a, a wider utility viewpoint. Uh, but the, hopefully the, the size will come out, you can review them in your own leisure. And uh, whereas I think we might do the questions perhaps uh, socially while we're meandering and looking around the various exhibitions today, um, uh, you can certainly come and approach me and have uh, a chat. And I've also missed the fact this is actually a first. This is the first doing a presentation outside. And when I left Cardiff this morning at five o'clock, it was lashing down and didn't stop until about Tamworth. So um, no surprise with the rain in Wales, I guess, and my accent. But uh, yeah, it's glad to be outside. And uh, I think the wind's not helping either, but they will. Okay, so I'll touch on the five or six sort of uh, headers, uh, similar themes right, to, to John and Sean. I um, want to give really the position and context what is utilities works in the highway and road environment? Um, what are the, the main challenges I guess we face? We've um, certainly heard some of them more from Sean, perhaps, than, than John, but certainly John touched on some of them. Uh, carbon, where does that fit into the equation uh, for utilities? Very much a key thing for uh, clients. Um, certainly in my old uh, role in Virgin Media, when we would uh, raise funds, pretty much top three question would be sustainability carbon from investors and bankers. So it is very much a focus for wider sort of uh, ancillary and support organizations and funding areas for utility works. Safety, common theme, uh, there's obviously some safety aspects we can talk of, which are specific to utilities, uh, over and above the wider elements that Sean and John have touched on. Um, where are we then in terms of innovation opportunities with the specifications, their latest iterations? So I'll have a quick look at England uh, from about three or four years ago, uh, Scotland, which we completed uh, just in the last year, and as we speak, again, with my accent in Wales, we're trying to review ours probably within the next 12 to 18 months. And as I said earlier, uh, Q&A Q question discussion, I suspect, against the open environment will be a little bit more difficult. So perhaps come along and uh, touch base later on. Okay, uh, so first slide with a bit of meat and vegetables on it is um, our position in context. Um, about 85% of utility works um, are roughly less than four square meters. If we think of the, the white banded two million excavations per year, all of a sudden there's a lot of small works happening. Now that's without, uh, okay, that's some of them actually do uh, cover, uh, I think again, it's been touched on before, uh, works are iron work. So again, some numbers, the water industry comfortably have 80 million stopcocks. And that's before we get into um, fire hydrants and stock valves. Again, Virgin Media, comfortably 20 million pieces of apparatus. 
more often those little small boxes rather like the water stop box outside your home as a customer. So a lot of small works that could use uh, coal in materials and, and innovative materials and certainly the industry is already using them but always room to improve. So there are huge opportunities there and huge opportunities to uh, influence the material choice subject to what we touched on now in terms of what the specifications allow us to do. But when we look at that very first bullet, small excavation, um, there's a lot of things that come with it which allow us to do lots of other little things as well. We can use the same material for full depth uh, of, the, of the black or the, or the equivalent hot clay material. So that's very important because it means single truck, less hot clays, um, less vehicles equals less journeys equals less mileage, all contributing to the carbon footprint. Okay. So in terms of our challenges, where do we begin? Right. Um, we are, in the main, uh, private companies. There is a lot of topical in, um, discussion about Thames Water at the moment. Privately owned, will they finance their debt and our bit debt uh, repayments in due course? So we are private companies working in the public highway. So the, there is a disconnect. There is a disconnect with what we can do uh, and what we're allowed to do. So we've got a few challenges to get over, uh, to get into the highway. We've got to occupy the highway in the first instance. That means permits and lane rentals, uh, in England particularly, not so in Scotland. Devolved powers have allowed us to do that. We need to excavate safely. We need to restore or uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 lay the apparatus, I'm big, big about that, um, because what we're not good at is actually advertising how well we do our work. So telecoms are quite fast. We can be sort of in and out in the day, but the deeper guys, water, hydrogen, gas, can take a long time. And our customers, traveling public, uh, including Mr. and Mrs. Jones in Laverne and Bavano, uh, are not very good at understanding how complex we are in what we do, how long it takes, and why it doesn't do very well sometimes. And then we obviously have to restore the highway uh, as soon as we can. We talk about timing, speeds, etc., uh, and the same uh, pressures uh, sit on top of utilities as they do for any highway works that we've heard already. Um, if we look at the middle grouping principles and hierarchy uh, after safety, the uh, yellow book, the green statement specification, is probably the reason street books utilities exist. And the fact that we have to do coordination, inspection, diversions are uh, uh, sort of ancillary and byproducts. What we do is put apparatus in the road and maintain it. That's what it gets to your house or all our houses. So there's quite a, an interesting hierarchy. And um, because it's engineering, uh, code of practice, we'd look at the engineering of the product, its in-life performance, and aesthetics, what does it look like at the end of the day, is third in line. And that's how the code of practice comes together. So a good engineering product starts life in a very good place. But what about then the pre-existing condition and expectations of our customers? Um, the highway condition is challenging. Um, the New Road Strip Exact came out from a report by uh, Sir Michael Horn back in the mid late 80s. In that era, what 40 odd years ago, highway maintenance was a different league compared to what we see today. Again, John and Sean have alluded to this. And the condition of that asset that we go into is weaker, uh, more fragile perhaps than it used to be. So we sometimes wonder whether we can actually meet the specification. So again, enhanced engineering products, which help us put something into a weaker uh, fabric, uh, is both literally flexible and gives us flexibility to do our works in the highway. Turn page time. Okay, 
Crab and Topics uh, touched on quite well, again, uh, by Sean and John before me. Uh, that four square metres opportunity is important. I think I failed to mention uh, on the earlier slide, um, Scotland didn't go forward with four. They left it at the two square metres. And, and most of their concerns really were in the carriageway and tracking of products. Um, if we're honest, probably utilities will tend to look at um, uh, innovative uh, coli and, and so on materials for the footways, obviously, and then the lower category three, category four orders are sort of being classified, again, as Sean and John have talked about. Um, the, there's a product approval scheme which we have to follow in order to get the, the product uh, over, the, over the line. Uh, and I'm sure that the main folks will know uh, what that's all about. In terms of reducing defects to zero, there are 40 ways, over 40 ways to fail a yellow book reinstatement. So any inspector strolling down the road could have a field day. We all know that. Do they add value? Question mark. Um, but more importantly, not many of them are the material. It's actually the layer and the, the, the end product and the performance of that material. The, the layer is actually pretty good. But we do then still have problems with our operators, or operators rather. Um, come Friday afternoon, job or not, will they do the right thing? Question mark. So we have problems there to resolve in terms of supervision. And in terms of defects, we live in a cost-challenging environment. Both our regulators, we've heard recently about Ofwat's first deter or draft determination for the Water Authority is one third of the budget they're looking for. And also, that then translates into the utilities company's own budgets in terms of what it can and cannot uh, put out and what it can recover then, obviously, through customer revenue. And then zero carbon, I think, um, for me, I always make the analogy with perhaps uh, zero harm in terms of the safety context. It's an absolute journey and we all hope to get to zero and I think the, the carbon uh, zero agenda is very much there. It's very much uh, top level and what have you with the department. So again, we now work in four devolved countries, England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, in no particular order. And each department is very much driven because it's a little bit more public sector orientated and therefore wants to have that carbon agenda um, fed into utilities works in the public highway. And we can see that the SROH, so the specification reinstatement of open highways, they are, and the second one is roads in Scotland, they will have um, supported this and in fact been challenged to indeed widen the material options uh, for carbon sort of support. And then there is a Hawk UK uh, project called the, the Road to Net Zero. Again, that will support the utility side at least uh, contribution to get into that uh, area. I think it's still early days. I haven't yet got to the materials and the specifiers and the working parties, but I think where we find gaps, we can certainly feed into those in good time. Okay, let me now touch on the safety. Um, it's really important to reinforce what we have to do. Um, it's always the first agenda item on any utility review um, at, uh, meeting. And um, we obviously have then the standalone order practice for signing and guarding, which is uh, upon um, Utilities, it does extend the roadworks, but in, in the main is the utilities. And we have Highway Authority and our own in house uh, undertaken inspections to make sure that we are at least setting the site up as safely as we can. In terms of materials and safety associated with them, again, placing, speed, uh, energy curing, we've talked about that uh, already in the earlier uh, presentations. Um, but then this doesn't overcome the problem of more complex traffic management, the cost of setting traffic management, it can dwarf the uh, cost of the physical works at times. And then we've talked about handling hazards and uh, any hot uh, application, again coal lay and uh, innovative products which meet the simplicity of laying the products are always key. 
uh, uh, for the uh, for utilities first line item. On the opportunities from the signing and guarding core practice, um, there's a thing called mobile works, um, and we will be putting some comments to the Department of Transport to see if we can widen out the scope of what can be done and the mobile works. Um, we've seen some great uh, LinkedIn videos of highway works with innovative products, but it would be fair to say that some of the Senate <coughs> guarding we will probably be in court over if that applied to utility works. So it would be great to get that collaborative, first time to use approach for both utilities works in the context of what the highways allow themselves to do. Okay, I won't spend a lot of time on the innovation other than to just go through quickly what's happened in England and Scotland. Uh, so, so basically, um, it's been widened, it's been improved, there are now more opportunities for uh, innovative materials, coaling materials and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, we still have this thing called Appendix A9, which is the trial process of the brand new material. And we still have to follow it, um, but the good news is in the lower green paragraph is that where the um, has been a successful trial between a utility and a single highway authority, then that should be extended to all highway authorities nationally. Now there's a couple of things here, you can see just to make up the, the word must is highlighted and that's a must obligation on the highway authority if they want to challenge the trial success. If they want to challenge that and not use that in their highway authority then they need to give some decent engineering evidence as to why it shouldn't be. So England went certainly a good way down the road of getting national approval from a single trial under Appendix A9 for a, a new product. I'll just touch on, these will be in the slides, they may look awfully difficult, um, but actually they do say the right things, they tend, they will send you down the right path of that approval process. Uh, and the thing I just wanted to pull out here, it hasn't come up in the slide, but you will start to see at the lower end whether a product has to go through a trial for five years. Now this is the five years that the Department of Transport were angling for in terms of the guarantee period the utility has to give for its works in the highway. Thankfully in England we managed to keep things down to two years, but I think there is an aspiration for particularly innovative, you know, really sort of left curve innovation that folks may look for a longer period of success before it is accepted. And then again, we come back to some comments made by Sean and John. Um, unfortunately, if we have a tr trial product and it fails, it will come back to the utilities. Any collaboration there ends because arguably what we're trying to do is pass the risk of the material that hasn't quite passed to the highway authority, which some might say is quite reasonable. So what it does do is potentially stifle the opportunity for material innovation because of the risk and ownership of that final reinstatement after X years of uh, life. Have a quick look at Scotland. So again, this is now uh, an increasing facet of what we're seeing with the devolved powers as each particular um, devolved nation picks up its own yellow book. It reviews the previous review, England, and starts to think about what I want for Scotland, what do I like out of the English ones, and how can I push this forward? And we're also seeing that through the political debate. I, politicians, love trumping another country. A nice simple example of my accent, We've got 20 miles an hour on the roads, everywhere in Wales, pretty much, if you're on a I mean, It's painful at times, but it's actually innovative, and I quite agree with it. But in terms of the example I'm going to make here, as we go around the UK, and uh, cyclical regions, countries are pushing the boundaries and the opportunities and the innovation forward, and Scotland has done this. 
on in their um, in, in their sort of process, they will now have a committee uh, or a national panel. It'll be made up of industry, uh, highways, and utility side. It will make the decision whether a product goes forward, and it will be a national specification. So again, they move the English boundary forward. So we're nearly there on a national pool. So let me just try and uh, uh, get to sort of summarising and what have you. Um, so Scotland is currently leading in terms of its innovation opportunities. Um, the A9 trial still exists, but I think we've got opportunities in both countries. Again, it's the sort of thing that Neon and others manufacturers need to understand, but that's perhaps where the likes of uh, myself and one or two other folks that are in those committees can help and one or two folks uh, I can see in the um, audience today that have got some understanding of that. But if we now go to Wales, as I said earlier, Wales is currently reviewing. The Welsh Government has a high sustainability and carbon footprint agenda and I think there's a real opportunity to push the uh, opportunities and debates and the innovation opportunities and work collaboratively with them to again raise the bar of opportunity for products such as Neon and Corey's. So I think that's the, the big opportunity that we face. Um, hopefully there's a bit of a, let me just check that. Yeah, there's the sales and marketing. So hopefully I've given you a little bit of a picture there in terms of uh, how utilities work, some of the conditions, some of the legal obligations we are under, which might be different and slightly different to perhaps how highways can take their works. Um, I've got to just make a statement that I'm not representing Students UK, which is the utilities arm. So anything you've heard from me today is my own personal view, but based on uh, 22 years in the chair covering these specifications, and hope that's been good. Now, I think there probably is a Q&A, but I suspect, yes, if we take them later, perhaps people come along and uh, nag me, or, throw something at me or whatever and I'll answer the questions as best I can. Okay? Thank you.